Hello! Okay, Independence Day Resurgence, uh, a film that's released tomorrow all over the country at midnight showings. I'm attending one of those midnight showings because I'm really excited for this film. I'm such a massive fan of the first movie, Independence Day, ever since I seen it back at the age of 9 in 97. It was released in 96, but um, I had it on VHS as a Christmas present in the Christmas of 96, and I had the VHS that had the holographic cover on the front and I really wish I could find that I really don't know what's happened to it but um hopefully at some point I'll be able to find it I think it's in the Arctic but yeah ever since I seen that first movie as a kid as I was only about not yeah a nine years old I fell in love with the film um it blew me away and I've been waiting for this sequel well ever since and 20 years later we've got it so I'm really looking forward to seeing that tomorrow night for me personally, Independence Day is a landmark movie. And what I mean by that, um, for me, it was like watching A New Hope for the first time. Or watching Jurassic Park for the first time. And it's one of those movies that kind of helped fuel my imagination. And helped fuel my love for film even more. And um, the film at nine years old just blew me away. And I, I, that's why, for me personally, this film is a landmark movie. It means something to me because it just kind of really kind of. I loved film anyway, down to the fa down to films like Star Wars and Jurassic Park. But Independence Day was another one of those films that kind of just fueled my love for film even more. So with Resurgence just around the corner, I thought it would be quite nice to actually review the first film for you. So I, I recently rewatched Independence Day on Blu-ray, um, but this is the, the remastered version of Independence Day, and um, I've been waiting for this release for a long, long time. I've been holding off from buying this, even on the first transfer of this movie onto Blu-ray, because the film had a very grainy look anyway, and it um, it never really transferred well over to DVD, and I never really seen the Blu-ray. Um, transfer of it, the first Blu-ray transfer, but I heard it still retained a lot of the grain, so I had a feeling they'd end up remastering this movie, and they did. So I recently re-watched this, and I, I enjoyed it just as much as I did when I first seen it, to be honest with you, when I, all the countless times I have seen this film. I really do love it. Some people call it a guilty pleasure. I don't know why. I, I, I think this is a really good movie, and I'm going to get into that now, obviously, but this is you know, quite a good movie for what it is, because a film like this could have gone terribly wrong, but there were so many factors in this film that worked, and they craft, they did such a good job of crafting it, Roland Emmerich, uh, the director, that it really did work. Just a quick warning, this, um, this review will contain spoilers uh, for Independence Day, so if you haven't seen the film before, you plan on seeing the film, but you don't actually want to be spoiled by anything, then I would say avoid watching this any further. So, Independence Day, directed by Roland Emmerich, who also co-wrote the film with Dean Devlin, who at that point had worked together on Stargate. The film stars Will Smith as a Captain Stephen Hiller. He's a fighter pilot in this film, and uh, I think he delivers an okay performance. I think he's quite uh, he's serviceable in this film, uh, you know, the performance-wise. You have Bill Pullman as the president, uh, Thomas J. Whitmore. Oh, I, I really like in this film. I think Bill Pullman really does a good job. And um, they also have then the great uh, Jeff Goldblum as David Levinson. He's like a, um IT expert who works for a satellite company. But um, it's also this very big environmentalist. He loves the planet and he loves to protect the planet. So he loves recycling and all that sort of stuff. So already we kind of get, you know, your usual stereotypical kind of characters. But um, I like the way that Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin wrote these characters and how they handled them. I think they handled them very well and they could have been very, I would have thought, cardboard cutout sort of characters. But for me personally, they weren't. I think they were quite fleshed out very well. You also have Mary McDonnell, who you might know as of the, as the president from Battlestar Galactica. Well, she plays the first lady in this. And I think she does a, a quite a good job in this, even though she's only in it very briefly. You also have Vivisha Fox, who plays Jasmine, um, which is Stephen's wife. And 
who eventually becomes his wife to, at the end of the film, but she's also come, uh, returning in the sequel, I, I, from far as far I, as far as I know. So Jeff Goldblum's character, David Levinson, he's probably my favourite character in this film, but I'd say I also really enjoyed uh, the character that's played by Randy Quaid, who plays Russell Cates. And he's like a, um, he's a widowed alcoholic crop duster who had served in the Vietnam War, but he also claims that he's been abducted by aliens 10 years prior to the events of this film. So obviously, uh, everyone kind of just put laughs in his face about these claims of him being again abducted by aliens, and they just blame it on post-traumatic um, stress in syndrome. But I, fa I fancy this character was quite interesting. And again, a stereotypical kind of character to be put into a film like this, but I, I liked it. I thought that was quite clever of them. Same goes with David Levison's character. I thought they were they were really good characters for this sort of film, and I I really like them. And I think that's one thing you'll find yourself when you were watching this film. Well, anyway, for me personally, is that you really do end up rooting for these characters and liking these characters. Uh, I'm gonna start off by saying I really love the opening scene in this film, and um, the, with the eerie music that's playing in the background, and you've got the vibrations on the moon and. It's quite a tense scene, I think, and uh, it's when you get the shot of the ship coming over the camera, as a kid, that just blew me away. But it blew me away in the same way that I knew Hope first blew me away when you first get the Star Destroyer going coming over the camera. And I, they're obviously fans of Star Wars, and for me, I think that was obviously a homage to the Star Wars films, and there's plenty of them in Independence Day, a lot of references to Star Wars, and I think this first shot of the ship coming over the camera to Earth was one of those references to uh, the Star Wars movies, but it's, I, I just loved it, and as a kid, like I said, it blew me away, and I still really enjoy that shot today. I also love the music that accompanies it, and, when, and the music that's right through this film, I think David Arnold delivers a very, very good soundtrack to this movie and what makes that opening shot with the ship coming over the camera over the moon and, and towards planet earth is what gives it that impact i feel is that ship it's not cgi it's model it's it, that ship is actually model work and i think that's what gives that scene so much more impact and when i was looking up some history back up on some history of this film and what re past reviewers back in 96 had said about the film a lot of these re reviewers complained that they weren't happy with the effects and that the effects were no different to what you'd seen in A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. And the reason for that is, is because about, I think it's 80 or 90% of this film uh, is model work. And I personally believe that the model work in this film looks a lot better than a lot of the CGI that we get today. And I really, I really appreciate and love this film for, for one of those reasons. And that the fact that they use so many practical effects in this film, such as model work. And that they only really relied on CGI when they really needed to. So I can't see how critics could have said that this, the effects in this film were pretty poor. Because for me personally, I thought they were great. And they kind of still hold up today. I mean, watching it on Blu-ray, it was... You could kind of tell in part, it, yeah, it's models, um, but I still prefer that to actually having a CGI fest. And for a film that was actually made and shot in 95, 1995, the effects, they still do kind of hold up. I mean, you could tell, it obviously, it's, the film has aged and the effects have aged, but it still holds up. And I personally think that it looks a lot better than some of the CGI fest movies that we get today. So the main plot of the movie is pretty basic and straightforward. There's nothing really complex about the plot of the story. But I, you'd sort of expect that anyway before going into a movie like this. So you've got these aliens. They come. They want to take over Earth or they want to invade Earth. They want, they want the planet for our resources. The planet's resources. And then move on. As you find out throughout the film. You find that information out later on in the film. So it's a pretty, pretty basic plot. But what I think really helps this movie and carries this movie is that they made the decision to focus on these bunch of 
Well, yeah, they are stereotypical characters, but they focus on these characters, and I think they flesh them out very well, considering there are so many ca different characters in this film. And you've got all these different groups that are struggling to survive this alien onslaught. And so by focusing so much on these characters, what I fancy the film did, and I think they did it very well, uh, considering the amount of characters they did have, I think the time that they had to do it in, I think they did a good job of doing that, and you do end up caring for these characters. But you see a lot of this film through their eyes. And um, I fancy it gives the, the film a sense of humanity. And, um, and, you get, and you get people from all different sorts of backgrounds, be it religious or colour, and it, they all, everyone gets together and fights and against this common enemy. And that's what I feel Independence Day stands for in this film. And that's not Independence Day for America, which we all know of, which is the 4th of July. But it, by the end of this film, it's Independence Day for the world. And I like that. It's a good example of everyone just uniting as one and fighting against this common enemy. And I like that little message in the film. So you would call this film a science fiction alien invasion disaster movie but this is more a disaster movie than any other genre and that's because well first of all the scale of the destruction in this film is immense and um as you would know from roland emmerich's previous films he loves to do this sort of stuff on a very large scale but i think independence day was when it, i think was the first film that roland emmerich directed that had this sort of destruction in it but it's not only that but it's the fact that because this film focuses on these characters and you, you've seen these characters' lives destroyed and them trying to fight for their survival, basically. And that is the other part of this disaster is their lives of, you know, you watching the, them kind of try and survive this alien onslaught. And that's what makes it even more a disaster movie because it focuses so much on these characters. Uh, some of my favourite moments in this film... One of my favourite moments in this film is when you first see the ships emerge from inside the clouds as they're coming through the atmosphere. And I just love how they shot those scenes. Even today, it kind of gives me goosebumps watching it. And again, with the soundtrack, the amazing soundtrack from David Arnold in this film. And um, when you first see these ships emerge from inside the clouds... You're watching it, the way they place the cameras in this film, they, they, you, they're watching it as if you're on the street level, as in you're on the level of the people and you're watching these ships emerge with the people. And I like that they chose to do it that way instead of having these kind of big wide, you know, wide shots of these ships just emerging from above. I think the way they decided to shoot these scenes and especially when you're in the cities in New York and on the streets and you see all these people panicking and you're watching it. As if you're in one of the streets in New York and you can see the ship just coming over. I just love those shots and it gives you that sense of scale and it gives adds a bit more realism to the movie. And you can actually feel the panic. It feels quite real. And they did a good job of conveying that by, by shooting it that way. I fancy this film, you could sense that kind of fear. And in a way, Kinna makes it a little bit disturbing and a little bit unsettling. Unsettling, but... um. I just really like that they chose to shoot it like that. And obviously then you do get eventually get the big wide shot of the destroyer coming out to the... Cr uh, once it's out to the cloud and over the city. But I just like that when you first see these ships and you're first introduced to these ships, that it's all on sort of ground level. And it gives you... It did give... The, you kind of just kind of feel the terror, really, of everyone. And as an eight, as an eight nine-year-old kid watching this for the first time, it just blew me away. And... Still to this day, I love that moment. And again, I'm going to refer back to something I've already mentioned, but I'm going to probably do that quite a bit for the rest of this review, because again, this is what I appreciate so much about this film, and what gives those scenes so much more kind of realism is the fact that it's not CGI, it's model work. Those ships are model work, and especially watching it on Blu-ray. Yeah, okay, you can see a bit, the fact, a bit more now that it is actually a model, but... I think that adds so much more realism to this film and again helps kind of install that sort of fear and gives you that kind of really sort of tense kind of feeling. It You know, it by having practical effects, it adds more to the impact of scenes. And another one of my favourite moments, and it's a classic, iconic moment, 
which was kind of it was shoved in anyone's faces during the theatrical campaign for this film and is the moments where the aliens attack and they fire the beams into the landmarks and they pretty much blow them to pieces and the cities you just get this kind of flame that goes for the cities that destroys them all and it's a very devastating moment and visually it looks quite impressive and um I think it's a very iconic moment and an iconic shot and I love it but I I really love it because of the technical side of it as well and how they actually did this behind the scenes and I think it's really impressive and again it looks so much better than I think it would have if they used CGI the way they did the flame going through the city okay on Blu-ray there were moments again during the scene where you could go oh that's a model but I preferred that to having a CGI model flying through the air instead. But yeah, a very, very epic moment in the film and a very impressive to look at. Very grim though. And the, de the devastation that these aliens cause is quite epic and um, quite devastating is probably the better word to use. And I think this film, if it didn't have the humour in it that it did have, then this could have been a very depressing movie and it probably would have fallen it fallen into the trap of taking itself too seriously and that's another thing I must point out that the hum there's a lot of humor running through this film and it needs that humor to, st to stop it from falling into that trap because this could get quite grim and depressing if you think of it when you think of the reality of what's happening but yeah watching that scene with the laser go through the towers and blow them to pieces still today just blows me away and um, again, throughout the entire scene, there's a lot of practical effects used, and I appreciate that so much more. And it's uh, very kind of visually looks uh, very, very good. Uh, Roland Emmerich also did a very good job at capturing the fear of everyone when this is happening. Again, focusing a lot more on the people, and he does do a really, really good job at capturing that terror and fear. And you do when you're watching it. Even when I watched this film two weeks ago on Blu-ray, I could feel the fear and. That's all down to the way Roland Emmerich crafted and shot this film. So then after their first attack of the aliens, you get the counter attack um, for us to, from against us. And it's you have a, a, a very good aerial fight scene. Again, a lot of model work used. And um, it's a very good, exciting scene with bits of humour in there as well, which they needed. Especially after the devastating scenes that you just witnessed. With the cities being destroyed, you, you kind of really do need that heat humor. Like there's a line that Will Smith says when they're in the fighter jet, something about "Don't you shoot that green sh green shit at me." And it's kind of it does it. Ne the film needed that. So I've heard, I've read a lot of criticism about the script of the film and the writing. And for me personally, I don't think it's that bad. You know, uh, yes, there's a lot of cheesy lines in it. It can be quite corny, and the script it can be a little bit patchy, but. I think it suits the film that it is, that it, I actually got no real major problem with the script. It's very, I fancy, self-aware of itself and it's very witty and I think that was right for the type of film that they were actually making. There's a lot of humour in the film, there's a lot of character development. Something again, other people have mentioned, there was enough character development. I think the character development in this film is such a satisfactory, to be honest with you. And when I say this character development in this movie, I'm not saying there's an awful amount of it, you. Yeah? I think they could have, yeah, they could have done a lot more to actually flesh out these characters. Um, these characters could have been developed a hell of a lot more. But for the type of film that this is, I think they developed them enough. And I was happy with what they gave us when it came to these characters. And yeah, if re in reality, I suppose they are quite, they're almost cardboard cut out. I personally don't think they are but I think they just gave them enough development for you to actually care about them and grow attached to these characters and for the type of film that it was again going back to a balancing act there was just enough character development to make me happy anyway and there's a lot of, there is a bit there's kind of emotional scenes there's one emotional scene where the president loses his wife and the way they shot that and the way there's not, there's not, many, there's not much said in that scene, but when his daughter goes to him, is she, is mommy sleeping yet? 
that really does pull on my heartstrings and again gives it that make gives that film a bit more humanity and um makes the film a bit more real because again at the end of the day this is an alien invasion movie but there are moments like that very nice little moments that kind of really bring this film down to earth and gives it that grounded feel so i, I do really feel like roland emmerich and dean devlin did a very very good job at balancing all those different aspects in this film and bringing it together i think they did craft a, a really good movie here with independence day and of all your different factors like the character development, the emotion and the script and the humour and it, they brought it all together and they just did the right balance of everything. So once we get to the area 51 you get another one of my favourite scenes in the film which is in the lab and you see the alien uh, for the first time. This is the alien that Will Smith's character has brought down in his fighter jet and he knocks out which is again quite cheesy. And you get that line of, welcome to Earth. And now that's what I call a close encounter. And again, it's a very funny, kind of silly moment in the film. But again, a moment the film needed. So you have the scene in the bunker where you have this, they have this alien and they're about to open this uh, bio, uh, biomechanical suit. And I really love the design of the alien in this film. Again, going back to what critics have said. A couple of critics anyway they didn't like the design of the alien and the ships themselves I really like the design of the alien I really dig it um, it almost looked a little bit alien like as in Ridley Scott alien I thought um, the, especially the head anyway not so much the rest of the body but the actual head itself seemed to be inspired a little bit by the actual xenomorph but I, I did like the design of it it um, and I like the idea that you have the alien, the iconic looking alien, actually inside this biomechanical suit that is operating it, kind of, more or less. And I really like that, and I, I like that concept, and when they, they cut in the biomechanical suit down and it just kind of springs open, even today it just makes you jump, it's a very well shot scene. I will admit, as a kid at nine years old, when I first seen this film and I first seen that scene, it did scare me. Especially the fact you don't really fully see the alien through all the sort of the mist, <coughs> the mist that's going on in the actual lab room, and he's holding the doctor there by one of his tentacles. Oh, that was a very kind of tense scene, and as a kid, it did scare me. And I still today I really like it, and I really enjoy that scene. So the soundtrack in this film, as I've previously said, is absolutely amazing. I really like the soundtrack to this film. And after watching it again on Blu-ray a couple of weeks ago, I think I'm going to have to try and invest in buying the actual soundtrack. Because um, I really, really do like it. And there's this moment of music in it. Now, I'm not actually sure what the name of this piece of music is. If anyone who's watching this video does know, let me know below. But um, I refer to it as the Alien March. For me, it's like the Imperial March from Star Wars, but it's obviously in this, it accompanies the aliens. And I really like the arrangements in this piece of music. And it's very sort of like, sounds quite alien in a way, but destructive as well. I just really, really like what David Arnold did. And he almost, he did a, a brilliant job of creating this mus the music. Okay, and now we and we also get the moment where a lot of people kind of say it's one of the cheesiest kind of speeches in movie history. I don't think so. The president's speech. I absolutely adore that speech. And um, I get different vibes about it, uh, from it. I don't really agree with what a lot of critics said. I don't really f think it's cheesy. I can see where they're coming from, but I think it's a very, very well written piece of speech I think it's a very very well written I think it's perfect apparently Dean Devlin actually it was the first draft it was the first thing that he actually wrote and they did it by mistake but it worked so well that they kept it and I, I do think it's an absolutely amazing speech and watching it again a couple of weeks ago it kind of made the hairs on the back of my neck rise and give me goosebumps and it's like yeah we're gonna fucking bring these motherfuckers down and uh I do really like that moment. I also like that they, the character Russell Case, uh, the crop duster, and um, the one who claims he's been abducted by aliens. I'm, I like that they used him to bring down the destroyer 
over Nevada. I really like that, and it's uh, it's like I, I'm glad they they went with him flying the fighter jet and not his biplane, the one that he uses to do crop dusting in, because that was the original idea, and um. I'm glad they reverted back to the fight the Jets. Apparently that didn't go down well with test audiences. And I think that would have taken any sort of realism that they'd created throughout the film. Via the characters and everything else. And I think that particular scene would have taken or destroyed or diminished that bit of realism that we actually had. So I'm glad they chose to stick with the fight the Jet. And I, I, it was quite an epic moment. I really like it. And... Again, I feel a little bit emotional because you do get attached to these characters. I did anyway, and I do like that car particular character. And it's, I think it was a great way to uh, bring the ship down, to be honest with you. So overall, it's a very fun, exciting movie. They convey that real sense of fear by focusing a lot on the characters. It has a very kind of self-aware and witty script. And you have all these different aspects of the film coming down from the effects to the character development. Which I will stand by. I think the character development in this film is enough. And the humour and the emotion. And it's all brought together very well by Roland Emmerich. And I would say this is probably Roland Emmerich's last really good movie. I don't think he's made anything decent since this film. Uh, it's a very good film. I will agree. I will admit that the script is patchy in places. It's not a perfect script, but it's not a perfect film either. And as much as I actually want to give this film an A+, there, there are little things that hold this film back. Only little things. I think this film is quite close to being a perfect movie. But you do. there are little factors which... Okay, I suppose the patchy script, and then you've got the stereotypical characters and the straightforward plot. But that's what this film is, and I think for what the film is... It's almost perfect and it's very enjoyable and I will be giving Independence Day an A. I just want to quickly mention when I watched the um, Blu-ray I actually watched the, uh, the extended version. The extended version was also on the DVD so I'd seen this extended version quite a few times. Now I prefer watching extended versions. I don't know why, I just do. I think in a lot of cases, extended versions are often a lot more better than the actual theatrical version. I'll give you a good example, and that's Watchmen. I love the theatrical version, but the extended version of Watchmen is absolutely amazing. And um, I just add, it fleshes a lot more out of the story and the characters. But in this instance, I really think the extended version of this film is not that good. The scenes that you do get added in you didn't need and I think it's one of the only times where I can actually say that about a about an extended version is that the extended version of this film really wasn't needed the you could see why the scenes were cut out so I do prefer the theatrical version when it comes to this particular film so again thank you for watching I'm gonna be seeing Independence Day Resurgence tomorrow night I'm really looking forward to it but what I'm also excited for is I'm actually seeing the first film Independence Day up on the big screen before seeing Resurgence the cinema that I'm going to and there are a few other cinemas doing it but they're holding a double bill they're showing the two films back to back and I'm really really excited to actually see Independence Day up on the big screen for the first time I've only ever seen it starting from VHS and on the, on the small screen, so I am really looking forward to that, and I'm hope, I'll hopefully have my review up for Resurgence at some point, Thursday, Thursday evening probably, hopefully. But um, the reviews have already started coming in this morning, before I started filming this review, and I'm going to purposely avoid any review or any star rating. I'm really looking forward to seeing Resurgence tomorrow. I'm not expecting a perfect film. Now, Independence Day, like I just said, it's not perfect, and I, to be honest with you, I'm not really expecting Resurgence to be as good as the first film. I'm not actually going in expecting a great film. I'm hoping I enjoy it, and I hope that it's exciting. So, thank you for watching. <laughs>